Back off the hands of Powell and Zas and Daimani. Can anyone stop him? No is the answer. Ben Loder doing his best to come across in cover defence. To the cast on the outside, Hachiva Daimani runs it in. I think growing up for me, life was actually normal. And it's only when I got to where I am today, I actually realised that it wasn't normal. You know, because of the different people I met along the journey. Um, I stayed with my mom, mom unemployed. Um, had friends in, 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 in just over Danun who, who chose a different type of life. And my, my mom sent me away to, to Cladoc. My granny was a domestic worker, two jobs, and looked after thing, plus minus thing, nine, ten siblings, changes because some of them would leave, come back, leave, come back. And my granny realizing that, listen, you being here, it's actually pointless because I was actually one of the guys that spoke good English, if you want to put it that way, and I interacted well with the other kids. And my granny felt that this is a bigger thing for you. And she sent me away. Um, went to Joburg, got to Joburg, um, looked for my dad, met my dad. My dad was a religious devoted Jew who um, was very strict. And um, even when I started playing rugby, never wanted me to play rugby. So I left. And I ran away from home, went to a different school, got a scholarship and got there basically staying alone in hostel, a yearly border and got adopted, you know, by a family um, uh, in Joburg. And yeah, that's basically my life in a, in a nutshell. Finding a place in rugby, which is actually ironic because I play rugby now, area called rugby. And Got to rugby and this this landlord said, no, you guys can stay in this one bedroom and put us all our stuff in this one bedroom and gave us a TV. Said, no, you guys can use the TV. And all that played back then was, was SABC. Actually, it was SABC 1 and SABC 2, depending on how you play with the aerial. So if you were good with the aerial, you can watch ETV, but then your SABC 1 will be buggered. So we kept the SABC 1 and SABC 2. And then that time, my mom was like, SABC 2, we were watching the news, watch 70 Land, 70 Land, the news, and then rugby started playing. And it was the World Cup, and we didn't know, you know, 2007 World Cup. And I remember watching the sports sitting there because all we could watch, you know, and my mom was be cleaning and stuff. And I remember uh, South Africa, I don't know, South Africa was playing with Brian Abedo called the Intercept. And Brian Abana went, 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 and just dove. And that was mind blowing. I was like, whoa, this is so cool. Because I had this soccer mind, this soccer mentality that when you score, you score and you celebrate. But the way Brian Abana like dove as a kid, that was so cool. And yeah, and that's when my first idea of rugby came about. And I remember my mom would send me to go buy bread and stuff. And because we lived, and this one bedroom with the door in the passage would go like, <clears throat> if the door was mistakenly open, I'll come flying and just, you know, dive onto the bed <laughs> and my mom would lose the day. And I think from there, <clears throat> and from there, I think that's when my whole love for rugby started. Moved to Craddock. Craddock is like a fully Afrikaans town and they just don't play soccer and I loved soccer at the time and got there and the coach would ask what sports and I said obviously in rolling for rugby like what sports you play and I'll be like Brian Abana and then they're like uh Fleo and I wouldn't know what the, what Fleo was and I'm like uh, no Brian Abana and they're like okay stand by the wing and I'll stand at the wing and I wouldn't know what to do and the ball would never come and Oaks was running and I just stand there and I asked him what to do. He's like, just stand there, just stand there. And yeah, that's how rugby started. Yeah, so the journey from obviously Craddock, um, I moved to Joburg, went to a primary school called Danny Theron, started doing athletics. And the coach saw me run and he's like, yes, you flipping quick, eh? Because I made districts and I made Gautengs and provincial for running athletics. And he was like, yes, you're so quick. 
um, you have played rugby? And I was like, yeah, yeah I play rugby. I, I, in my old school, I played rugby. And he said, oh, okay, what position do you play? And I was like, uh, obviously, I knew then the word fleal. I didn't know his wing. I was like, yeah, fleal. And he goes, oh, fleal. And he's, I'm like, yeah. And he's like, okay, you actually make sense because you're so quick. And then rugby season started in the beginning of the year. He puts me on the wing and can't catch a ball. They kick the ball. You'll tell me to drop. you like, talk to me, drop, drop. And they'll kick the ball out there, bounce, 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 till it's dead and pick it up and I'll just drift, drift, drift. And then after that, he came to me and he said to me, listen, and I was like one of the tallest kids in primary. And he said to me, listen, you're so tall, you're so big, everyone is scared of you. Just run straight and make a noise. And I'm like, nah. And he's like, trust me, just get the ball and like, start screaming. And I was like, nah, I can't do that. He said, like, I promise you. And then from there, his name was Mr. Axel. And then he would give me the ball, like a tap move. He's like, did that ever take it? And I'll tap it and I'll start screaming, like running. And the kids would just open up. And I think from there, that idea of, Oh, listen, running straight and stuff started. And because of that, the confidence from that, I always started running straight, trying to run over every kid. And then obviously everyone started growing up and catching up. And then from there, because I was one grade below, I went to a school called um, President. So I was in grade seven, but I was actually un under 14. So they, my coach sent me a school called Old School Pres President went there and was training with them and it's actually a weird story so they were playing against a school called alberton and up since i was a part of the school i couldn't play i was just training with them but they would ask me to come with because i wanted to watch and they were playing against alberton they got an injury and the coach said to me um do you mr for his name and he said to me do you do you, uh, injury happened wing and then they had to move a guy in and a wing got a uh, fullback got injured they moved the fullback to wing and he asked me can you play i said yeah he says okay just chill on standby then a lock got injured and he said to me can you can you uh play slot I forgot, no, like, sorry so i don't know what that is and it's like a lock lock i'm like yeah sure because i always wanted to play and he put me in i wasn't part of the school just put this random guy that was training with them in the week in and I got there and I remember chilling on the wing because that's all I knew. So the ball and, the, and obviously under 14 rugby is totally different to under 11 and 12 rugby. The ball moves and got the ball and I remember just bolting straight and like so I screamed Aah! and then obviously scored, scored, I think scored a couple of tries that day and the coach said, listen, you next week Monday at my school. And from there, played there, and started doing very well at, at, at President. And then there was like this development program that they did for all the small schools that will never get a chance of playing big, um, for all these top schools like Monument and stuff. So they get this, like this development program. And from there, that's when obviously um, I made the team there and that's when me, yeah, myself, my Dorsh, and all the guys were part of that program. And yeah, and we played against at the London Festival against Haasfontein. And Haasfontein was one of the best teams at the time, and we beat them. And after we beat them, every single school came to us and like, I want you, I want you. It was like a, you know, and that's how I got to JP. I think when I got to JP, to be honest with you, when I when I started playing rugby, I never thought I'd make money out of rugby. I thought maybe one day I'll be a t finish school, become a teacher or policeman. You know, that's where I'm from. You know, if you're a policeman, you know it's 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 a, it's a high rank. And I felt like that's what I want to do: or join the army or something. You know, down the line, if I can just earn a salary. That's all I want to do. And then when I got to JP, rugby became like like a culture you know, in, 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 in the boys' school, was serious. Like everyone's talking about rugby, you know, they treat rugby players differently. And that's okay, cool, I start playing rugby. And then, um, was good at rugby, and then when I started getting approached by teams outside of, 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 of um, the unions, I started saying, listen, after school, we want you to come to, to our union, or, you know, and that's when it clicked. You know, when they'll offer you something like after school, we will offer you this, you know, 
a thousand rand or whatever they will offer you and you start thinking start calculating the stuff you could do with that money and you know you start thinking of your mom back at home and your granny and start saying oh flip, if, if i can get this amount put this um, amount separately for myself and send this money home and then you think to yourself yo i could live you know i'm out this is life changing you know and yeah and that's when i started realizing that it, it, i can do something big with the sports you know especially when i went to go train with the lions and i saw the cars they were driving and i was just like whoa i wanna i wanna be a one day